All right, guys, so let's talk about what a hip replacement actually is. And I'm gonna show you some parts. I wanna also describe how we put it in. Obviously, this is my interest, because this is what I do every day. So I just wanna share it with you so that you get an idea, if you ever end up in my operating room, what exactly is gonna be done, at least from a, from a bone standpoint. So using this x-ray as an example, um, the first step, obviously, we make an incision. So I like to make my incision in a, a transverse or a bikini line um, you know, orientation, which is kind of sideways right underneath the hip crease. Um, when we get down to the joint, we're going to open up the joint capsule. So the capsule is what surrounds every joint. Every joint has to have fluid to function, meaning every joint has a waterproof seal around it called the capsule. And so to get inside the joint, we have to open the capsule. So once we open the capsule, the first step is going to be removing the head of the femur. Now, this is a person that shows an artificial hip alongside of a normal hip. But we're going to use this normal hip and just describe the process. So the first step, and I'll draw some lines, is going to be to make a cut using a saw across what we call the neck of the femur. At that point, we'll remove the femoral head. Once the head is removed from the socket, that gives us a big open look at the socket. We can see the whole socket now that the head is gone. Now we have to make this socket into a shape that's going to fit our artificial implant. And this is an example of what we call a cup, an acetabular cup. So we have a tool called a reamer, which is shaped like a hemisphere looks somewhat like a cheese grater on the outside and it spins on a drill and it spins in order to make the inside of your socket a perfect hemisphere in order to put the artificial cup in. Now how does it get fixed in? This is a question I get a lot. How, how do you put this thing in and it stays in? Well we use a technique called press fit. So the implants come in increments of even numbers based on the diameter. For instance, this implant is 54 millimeters in diameter. We prepare the inside of the socket with odd number reamers. So as soon as we get to an odd number reamer that we feel like fills the entire inside of that person's socket because everybody has different bone shape and different bone sizes, once we get to the size, for instance, on this one would be 53 millimeters, and I said, okay, that 53 millimeter reamer looks like it fills well, we open up a 54 millimeter cup. So this cup is one millimeter larger than the hole we just created, plus it has a porous surface. They're made of titanium because bone loves to grow into titanium, just like dental implants. This porous surface allows for surface area for bone to ingrow. So we'll press fit a cup into the socket side. Now inside that cup goes a plastic liner or a polyethylene liner. This liner will fit into the cup and we'll hit it to lock it into the cup. This essentially functions as your new cartilage and this is the part of a hip replacement that wears out. In the days of old, 20, 30 years ago, these polyethylenes didn't last very long, so we always encourage people to wait till they were older to have a hip replacement. Modern day polyethylenes, very durable. You should expect a minimum of 25 years of life out of a modern day polyethylene. And let's say this polyethylene wears out like your cartilage did at some point in time. Well, the treatment would be to remove the polyethylene and to put a fresh one in. As long as the implants are still ingrown to bone, there's no reason to remove them. And so having additional bone work is unnecessary. Once the hip socket has been replaced, then we have to replace the ball that we just removed. So 
What we do is machine out the inside of the femur, which is made up of soft cancellous bone or the bone marrow. So we machine out the inside of the femur in order to put an implant in. Again, these come in many sizes and when we're machining it, we start with a small brooch, which is the same shape as the implant. It's got teeth on it to remove bone as we're tapping it in and tapping it out. And once we get to the proper size, when it feels like it's stable, an x-ray confirms that we have proper fill, then we get the permanent implant, put it down the middle of the bone, this collar of the implant will seat on our cut edge of the bone, and then we place on a ceramic ball. These balls come in multiple sizes as far as lengths go. These lengths will either sit farther down on the trunnion, which is what we call this neck part, or they'll sit higher up. And through a process of trialing with dummy parts, we determine what ball is needed in order to recreate your leg length, because we want to make sure your leg lengths are correct when you leave the operating room. Once we determine through trials what ball is needed, we have the real ball open, again made of ceramic, that locks on to the stem, and then that gets put back into the artificial socket that we just placed to become your new ball and socket joint. And because it's completely artificial, no pain can be generated from the joint itself. And because it's a round on round construct now, range of motion is restored to full. So that's the basics of a hip replacement. Um, modern day artificial hips should give you multiple decades of life and if you think you're in need, give us a call at Louisville Hip and Knee Institute and we'd be glad to check you out.